tail on one of those. More than you can afford, pal. Smoke. They were at the light and they were gunning their engines and when the, the light turned green they all took off down this way and a second later I heard a bang and I got up the ran to see and cars were flying. This is how Glenn Tchaikovsky's car looked after the accident. Sunday afternoon he and his wife were driving in Oceanside when they got in the way of an out of control drag race. That drag race started here on Lawson Boulevard. A Lamborghini and Corvette chasing one another southbound at an estimated speed of 75 to 80 miles per hour. At one point, police say the Lamborghini crossed over into northbound traffic and hit Tchaikovsky's Volvo head on. There was just a horrific explosion. It seemed to take forever as I saw this Volvo spinning in the air upside down. I saw a Lamborghini. Uh, it too was airborne. And underneath the Volvo in the distance, I could see a Corvette. We were so close to this accident that there were things falling from the sky, little bits and pieces of the automobiles, including some liquid. And for just a, a, a moment, it seemed as though it was raining out. The phone rang. I answered the phone. And there was someone at the other end of the phone that I really didn't recognize. And he said to me, you have a sister-in-law whose name is Amy. And I said, yes, What's, why do you ask? And he said, well, there's been a terrible automobile accident, and she needs you here. A man came running up from my left, and he pointed at the Volvo. He said, I'll get at that one. You get at that one across the street. And I ran across the street to what was left of a Lamborghini. There was a man with his legs pinched under the steering wheel. His upper body was hanging out of the car. I remember how he moaned. This guy moaned at least this loud. Oh! I mean, it was just this agonizing pain that he must have been in. And then his whole body just shook, and, and, he, and he went limp. And that was it. I knew he had had it. I got to the scene of the accident and uh, I saw my brother uh, lying on the ground, pretty mutilated. And I saw someone administering CPR to him. And I looked at my sister-in-law and I said, what happened? And she just was yelling at me, is he dead? Is he dead? went over to the other car that was part of the accident, it was a Corvette, and I said out loud to no one in particular, where's the driver? And this man said to me, it was me. I said, what happened? And he got very quiet and he looked down at the ground and he said, we were racing. When we got to the hospital, a doctor came in and said to me that they had my brother on a respirator and they had him on all other life support types of equipment. And it occurred to me when he said on a respirator, I, I asked him, if, do you mean to tell me that if you took him off the respirator that he would be dead? And the doctor looked at me and he said, no, what I mean to tell you is that he is dead and we're trying to get him back. My son arrived. We told him what happened. He and his uncle were very, very close. And about uh, 15 minutes later, the doctor came back in and told us that uh, we had lost Glenn. Just the barely recognizable mangled remains of this 2001 Lamborghini. Police say the driver of this car, Michael Vasapoli, 
was drag racing against this 1994 Corvette. The license plate will love to accelerate, owned by 27-year-old Kevin Hart. Michael Vasapoli was operating a Lamborghini. He was killed, and uh, the operator of the Volvo, Glenn Jakowski, was also killed. Both Jakowski's and Vasapoli's wives were with them in the cars. They were rushed to local hospitals. The head-on was with this Volvo, going somewhere else and in the wrong place at the wrong time. My niece and nephew had gone to sleepaway camp the day before the accident. The next day, my wife, Amy and I, drove up to uh, the children's camp. The director had, uh, had them brought into a room. And um, when they saw us, they were like visibly disoriented. Like, why are you here? And then the older of the two became like white as a ghost and started to yell, what, what's wrong? Amy held her children, sat them down, and told them that mommy and daddy were in a terrible car accident. And that, you know, mommy's okay, here I am, you can see me here. But that daddy had to go to heaven. Maybe uh, there, there was a speed contest, maybe there wasn't. In his opening statements, defense attorney Edward Jenks calls his client, Kevin Hart, the scapegoat and tries to pin the blame on the dead guy, the driver of the Lamborghini. Anything more than a reckless endangerment or a speed contest based on what I know at, uh, about the facts of this case at the time would seem excessive. But in his opening statements, Assistant District Attorney Frank Schroeder told jurors Kevin Hart was drag racing his souped up modified 1990 Corvette, cutting in and out of traffic, driving on the wrong side of the road. This is a smart jury. They listen very carefully. I think that they know that uh, this defendant on trial here acted recklessly and he can't just now wash his hands because he wasn't the car that drove into the oncoming lane. Later on we would go back and with public engineers and private engineers had the opportunity to look at the skid marks, look at the brake and tire marks to show that everything that we had at that scene that day was memorialized to bring back to the trial so that the jury and the judge could make an adequate decision about what we felt so strongly about in charging Mr. Hart with manslaughter and assault. Defendant Kevin Hart has been found guilty of two counts of manslaughter for the deaths of Glenn Jakovsky and Michael Vasipoli. Certainly there is no question about the conviction for the reckless death of Glenn Jakovsky and the injury to Amy Jakovsky. It is a case of first impression here in New York as far as holding one drag racer liable for the death of the other drag racer. This is not some kind of a uh, asterisk kind of homicide. This is a manslaughter, direct, pure, unadulterated. He's responsible for killing two people, five to 15, is very appropriate as far as sentencing goes. Family and friends of the defendant felt that a jail sentence was unfair. The defense spent a lot of time putting the blame on Michael Vasipoli and indicating that he should be the one on trial. But I assure you that he did not get away with anything. At the young age of 30, he is dead. His family is without him. His wife is now a widow. She gave very dramatic testimony at trial. She testified how this race started, how she and her husband were driving in this car, when the Corvette pulled up and started egging them on into a race, started revving his engine. Karen Morrow all of a sudden realized what was going on and she turned and looked at her husband and said, don't do it. But uh, it was too much of a temptation and off they went down the road and uh, a minute later, she was a widow.
and she's now living with that aftermath and always will. It's just a tragedy all around. Three families have been uh, devastated. A young man in jail right now. It didn't have to happen.